guys. This is Christy Falk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. Well, today it's time for our one Stamp at a Time blog hop. We uh, hop every second Thursday of the month. And this month, our theme is September Garden Party. And we're using this color palette right here. Um, I made two cards, and we're supposed to use at least two colors on our cards. So when I, But I am using three on the first one. I'm using Soft Succulent, Crumb Cake, and Cajun Craze. And then my second card is going to be all these four right here. So if you'd like to stamp along with me, just look at that blog post link below in the video description. Click on it, and you'll find the dimensions and the supply list. And near the end of the blog post, you'll also find the blog hop. So make sure you check out all the other demonstrators in the hop, because we've got some really talented ladies in the group. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first off, I want to show you the bundle I'm using. Yes, bundle. If you look in the July, December mini catalog, you only see the Apple Harvest stamp set. But during September, we have dies. Oh, this is part of the Perfect Partners uh, promotion that's going on right now. So the dies are called Apple Blossoms dies. So if you already own the Apple Harvest stamp set, make sure you get the dies. But if you don't own them, you can purchase the bundle and save 10%. But the dies are while supplies last or until September 30th, whichever comes first. So you want to get them soon. Okay, now the stamps that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using the big Apple Bunch right here. I'm going to use the greatest gift as a good friend. And then I'm going to use this apple right here for the inside of the card. And for the dies, I'm going to use this one. This one is going to die cut those apples. Then I'm going to use this one to uh, die cut my greeting. And that's actually all I'm going to do. But you can see all of these really neat flowers, standalone dies. I really like this die set. And I'm using another die set called the Split Card Textures dies. I just got these and I just had to use them. So this is the one that I'm using with this die set. And I'm also using the Leaf Fall 3D embossing folder. And this is in the July to December mini. And that um, Split Card Textures dies is in the annual catalog. First off, we're going to get some stamping done. So I've got a piece of very vanilla. This is a three and a quarter by four inch piece. And I'm going to take my Tuxedo Black Memento and this big apple stamp. And when they're large, larger than my ink pad, I usually have it facing rubber up. And then get this inked up. And when I use my Memento, I do a little swish. As you can tell, I'm twisting it. I think it inks it up a lot better that way. And then we'll just stamp this near the middle. It doesn't have to be exact because we're going to be die cutting it out. Okay, so hold on to that. Let's go ahead and get all the stamping done while we're at it. Let's grab another piece of very vanilla. This is a four by five and a quarter inch piece. And this is going to be the inside of our card. So I'm going to grab that single apple. And we'll go ahead and do it with our Tuxedo Black Memento. And I'm going to put this in the bottom right corner. Hold that down for a few seconds. There we go. And then I'm going to grab a piece of um, crumb cake. This is a four by three quarter inch piece. I'm going to grab my greeting and my Cajun Craze ink pad. Go ahead and ink this up. I'm going to stamp it near the middle. Like I said, we're going to die cut this out too. So now we've got that on there. And that is all the stamping we're going to do. But we've got some coloring to do now. Okay, first off, let's color this image. I'm going to be using my Soft Suede Cajun Craze and crumb cake uh, Stampin' Blends. So I always start with the dark color first. Let's go ahead and color those apples in first. So I decided to use Cajun Craze because I'm wanting to stick with our color palette. And I think it looks fine with this color too. I know you don't usually see apples this exact color, but it looks really neat on the card. So I'm just coloring all the areas. Stampin' Up! has done the work for us once again. They've given us some black lines here to show where the shadow should be. So that's what I'm going over with the dark, like so. This doesn't take long. You can always go over it again if you want to get a little bit darker. Sometimes you need to do that because you want it to saturate the card stock. And I think I might put, oh yeah, we've got a little spot right here. That looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and put this away. Let's get the light Cajun craze out. And now I'm going to color the whole apple I'm going to go around this leaf real quick because I want to make sure I don't mess the leaf up. Okay. Color this in. I'm going over the dark 
that I did first because I want to blend those two shades in. We want a nice gradual effect, not that real stark from dark to light. So you can tell this dark is just a little too dark. So I'm just going to go right where they meet. I'm not do doing the whole apple because I kind of want to have it shining a little bit. So it looks a little more like a 3D effect. And there we go. That looks pretty good. So there's my first apple. I'll blend it in. So I'll go ahead and finish the last two. Okay, now if you could tell, when I was leaving the centers a little lighter, I kind of curved them a little bit because I want it to have the same curve as the apple. So we've got the apples all done. Now I decided to use my crumb cake on the stems. So I'm going to take my dark one. And there are a couple little places that need to have a little bit of dark here. It's a little bit right here. A little bit right here. And any place where I think there might be a little bit of a shadow, like a, close to the apples. Oh, I missed an apple. Let's hurry up and do that one quick. Finish up my, doing my dark. Let's hurry up and get that apple done. We've got a little bit right here. He's a little guy, so I totally missed him. And then we'll hurry up and grab our light again. And we'll color that in, making sure we don't color on the leaf. I almost went under my leaf. There we go. That looks much better. Okay, now all the apples are done. Now I'm going to bring in my light crumb cake, since I've got my dark on there. Most of it's going to be light. I'm just everywhere there's a stem or a branch. I'm going to color it in. And if you go over the light again, that will darken it up. So if you go with a light crumb cake and it's a little too light for you, just go ahead and go over it again and it will darken up a little bit. And that's actually what you want. It, like I said, you want it to saturate that cardstock. So you're actually going to see it on the other side like I am here. That means I'm getting enough ink in there. Going over my little dark areas, making sure they're blended. I think that needs to be a little darker. Look this over and see if I got it all. Looks pretty good. I think the rest of it is our, uh, our leaves. So I'm going to use my soft suede. Not soft suede. <laughs> I'm going to use my uh, soft succulent. And I'm going to take my dark. And everywhere I think there should be some dark, like long here in the middle. And I'm going to go on the veins just a little bit that are coming out, not going all the way to the ends. And kind of make them jagged lines. I'm not going straight. And you just keep doing this with the dark. Okay, it looks like I've got all my dark done. So now I'm going to do what I've done on the others. I'm going to bring in my light soft succulent and color the whole leaf going over the dark to make sure that it blends in really nice. So go over this. And then I'll go over the dark just a little bit more, just to lighten it up a little bit so it's got a more gradual effect. And then I'll finish the leaves. Okay, let's look over my leaves. Sometimes you need to go over it again because once it dries, sometimes things lighten up or darken too much. You just keep playing around with it till it looks the way you want it. And I think this is looking pretty good. So now we've got that one done. We've got one more thing to color and it's the same thing. We're gonna grab this. We're gonna do our um, apple. So everywhere it's dark, once again, oops. You can use the blunt side. I like using the brush tip. So let me get my brush tip back out. So wherever I'm seeing those dark lines, and I'm kind of going over the dark lines a little bit too, not just staying right on them. We've got this here. Apples are really good for making cards for teachers, of course. The fall apple harvest is coming soon. Now we'll take the light Cajun craze. I'm going right along the leaves again. I always like to outline if there's something going over the image I'm coloring in just so I don't get to color in and not see it. Because sometimes the marker, the bl uh, blend will get in the way and I might color something I don't want to color. And I'm doing brush strokes, so it's kind of the curve of the apple again. You really feel like an artist with these blends. 
Okay, and now I want to go over the dark again and lighten it up and come over on the Cajun craze. And once again, leaving a little bit in the middle, not going over it again because I want it to be lighter. Okay, so we've got the apple part done. I'm just going to grab my dark crumb cake and do that little stem there. Okay, and then we'll do our soft succulent. So grab the dark and put it on the veins again. And I'm going to grab my light soft succulent and color in the rest of the leaves, blending the dark again. Okay, so we are all done coloring, so we'll get the, these out of the way. And now we're ready to do some die cutting and embossing. Okay, for die cutting, you need that base platform and the die plate and a standard cutting plate. Let's go ahead and get our apple out. Get this big die on it. I think we can probably do our greeting too. Let me grab that one. Yep, that'll fit. So there's my stem, so we know that's up here. I'm making sure I get the image directly inside that opening in the die. The die goes right around the image, so you don't have to worry about a border. It just goes right around it. I'm going to put two pieces of my um, post-it tape on, and then I'm going to grab my long label. I love having labels in die sets for our greetings. Makes it so you don't have to use that um, rectangle like you, we always do. Get this right in the middle. This one just fits. Okay, that looks pretty straight. And then we'll take a couple, and I'm making sure that I am pushing the tape inside that die because I don't want that moving. And then we'll put another standard cutting plate on top. You run it through. And then, I love having dies with this. So if you've been looking at this apple set, you definitely need to get it bef this month before it's too late. And don't forget, when you order from me, make sure you um, check out my thank you gifts. I've got a link to that down in my video description. I get new, have new thank you gifts every month. There we go. And you use my host code for orders under, under $150. You want to use my host code. That way you'll get my thank you gifts. And then if it's $150 or more before shipping and tax, make sure you don't use the host code. You'll still get my thank you gifts. You also get Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up. And there is my label right there. Now we've got one more thing to die cut. I'm grabbing another piece of very vanilla. It's four by five and a quarter. And we'll put that right here. And then I'm going to grab this die right here. And what I'm doing, I'm kind of looking at the border around the straight edges of this, trying to make it about the same width on the very vanilla. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead, since this is another big die, I'm going to put tape on both sides. You really don't have to. I I think when I made my original card, I actually didn't. But since I'm doing a video, I'm going to make sure <laughs> it's down really good. Now, I'm going to run it through twice. It may not need to. But I always like to do that to make sure all those little pieces come out. And I didn't have any problems with this on my first card. So let's see how it goes this time. But these dies, I have been waiting for these dies. They were on, um, unavailable for a while. I think they've been unavailable a couple times because they've been really popular. At this time, I thought, okay, I'm going to get them. As soon as I saw they were in stock, I'm like, I'm going to get them this time. I'm not going to put it off this time. But see how easy these are falling out? Even those little pieces. I just kind of stick my finger there. I could use my take your pick tool, but they're coming out with me not having to get that out. Except for this little guy it wants to hang on. There we go. So there's that. Now we are going to do some embossing with this one. So let me get all these little pieces off of here. They're kind of flying all over the place. And we're going to do a 3D folder. So I'm going to get that leaf fall. You just need the base platform. And then you put this in. Now I want to move this around, trying to make it so I have leaves. I'm trying to remember how I did this. I think it was this way. Oh, there we go. I want to make sure that this is covered with leaves over here. I don't care about this. It's not going to show that much. So I'm going to try to get it up here. That looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because the leaves are going every which way. You want to put it in fold first. And then you need to have the specialty plate. This is the gray plate that also comes with the machine. 
All the plates that I'm showing you come with a stamp and cut and emboss machine. Take this out. And now we have some really neat leaves on the other side. Isn't that neat? Okay, now we've got, I think that is all we need with the die cutting machine. Yes, it is. So let's go ahead and put this away and finish the card. Okay, first off, I want to grab this one. We're going to turn this over. I'm going to grab my silicone mat just to keep things so I don't get glue on here. I'm going to take some multi-purpose glue. And I'm going to put some right along here, along the edges here, making a thin strip here. If it globs on you, you can turn it over and put the glue on the silicone mat. If you've watched my videos before, you've seen me do that. But this is coming out just fine. I don't think I'm going to have to do that. Because the glue will come off and go onto the silicone mat. And then once it dries, then you can um, peel it off. And I'm going to put some right along this section here. The reason I'm doing that is because this is real thin. I didn't want to use my seal. Okay, now that I've got glue on this, I'm going to take a piece of Rustic Harvest DSP. This is three and one quarter by five and a quarter. This is the side I want to be showing. So I'm going to turn this over. And I'm going to put this right on top of here. I'm getting it right along the edges here. And I made it wide enough that it's uh, going to be uh, showing, there won't be any space showing in those the openings. Kind of push this down, hold it down so it doesn't move. You want to get that glue to um, adhere to it, to soak in. And then we've got this, okay? Isn't that cool? I love having that in the background. So we'll get this out of the way. We're done with our glue. Let's grab our card base. This is a piece of soft succulent that's eight and a half by five and a half. Get those corners to meet. Grab my bone folder. And we will go ahead and put this on because we're not going to wrap any ribbon around it. So I'm going to grab my seal. And one thing, if you need to, I can tell I'm okay. When you turn it over, make sure you don't... Oh, no, I take that back. See, I've got a little bit of designer series paper there. I'm glad I thought to check that. Because I made it five and a quarter, which is the same width as this. But if you're off a little bit on your cutting, you don't want to see any of that on your cart. So we're just going to cut that little bit off. I'm just going right along my very vanilla layer. It looks like I even have a little bit down here. I think I got it on there. A little cockeyed, that's okay. Nobody else is going to tell. There we go. Now we can put this on our card base. I think I got enough adhesive. Oh, I forgot to put the middle adhesive here. Got a little sidetracked when I saw that paper was going over. So we put this right in the middle, like so. And then I'm going to bring in my apple. We're going to put dimensionals on this. So let's, let's put one up here. I think probably around four, three or four is all we're going to need. Put one there. You know what? I think I will put one there in the center. And this one I've taken the paper backing off already. <laughs> and get my take your pick, pick tool out. Take these pieces off. I'm scooping them off. And I'm going to put it right about here. I kind of liked it going over both sections. Okay, that looks about right. I'm not going to push it down all the way. So I want to see how this is going to look. Make sure I've got it where I want it. And that does look good. So I'm going to go ahead and push it down. This is going to go on with dimensionals too. And I think the big ones, yes, they do fit. I couldn't remember if I had to cut these down or not. And since it's a, well, I'm not going to have to worry about putting one in the middle because it's going to be going over the bottom of the, apple leaf so that's going to hold it up because this is on dimensionals too so we'll take the dimensionals off put this right across i'm going to go no actually i did center it i was thinking i went over a little bit so look at that centered pretty good look at it that looks good to me make sure it's straight i'm at an angle so hopefully it's straight <laughs> Then I'm going to grab a piece of Baker's Twine. This is from the Baker's Twine Essentials Pack. This is a crumb cake piece. It's a nine-inch piece. The other colors are white, black, I think gray, granite, I think. I'm not sure if I just named them all off, but it's got all the basics that you need. I love this crumb cake one. 
And it's, I like it because it's easy to tie. So I'm just going to keep playing around with it. I made it longer than it needed to be. I don't want the bow to be real big. One thing twine does do is twist sometimes when you uh, go to tie it. But you can usually straighten that out once you get it on there. There we go. I've got it untwisted. Now I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. There, that helped with it a little bit. That bow needs to be a little bit smaller. There, you just keep playing around with it till it looks good to you. Now I'm going to take my dement. Uh, I'm sorry, glue dots. And I'm going to put it the knot right there if I can get hold of it. There we go. And while it's on the paper, I'm going to squeeze that. But one little section wants to keep curling on me, but it's going to be okay because I'm going to be tucking this under. So I've squ squished the uh, mini glue dot so it's not as wide. Try to flatten this out. I'm going to tuck this underneath that greeting just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. Push it down. Okay. And now I'm going to trim the ends because they're definitely way too long. Always make them just a little bit longer than they need to be because it's easier to tie that way. There we go. So now we've got our little bow there. And now we're going to use uh, put a little bling on it. I'm using the 2021 to 2023 in colors, opal rounds. And I'm going to use the soft succulent ones. I'm going to put a small one about right here. And another small one about here. Oops. That's okay. I was going to put a little closer, but that works. And one right here. So we've got the outside done. Now we just need to put our inside piece in. So we'll turn this over. So it looks kind of neat on the other side too, doesn't it? Get our adhesive on here. I always make sure I've got them in the corners so my corners don't come up later. Put this on the inside. And oops, and we are done with the first card. And now I'll get the uh, next card out that uses the same color palette. Okay, now we're ready for my second card, and this one features the Fresh Cut Flowers Bundle. This is another set. Now, this is from the annual catalog, the uh, stamp set is, but it did not have dies. It's part of that Perfect Partners uh, promo this month, too. So if you want to get these dies, these are Fresh Cut Stems dies. You have to get them by the end of the month, September 30th, or they're while supplies last, so they could sell out before that. So if you've already got the stamp set, then you can just get the die set. If you need both... If you can uh, get them as the bundle and save 10%. So what I'm going to be using, I'm actually using this flower stamp here. That's the only one I'm using. I decided not to use the big one this time. We're just going to use that little one. So we need the uh, die that takes that one out. And I do believe it's this one. Yes, it is. I can tell. So we need this one here. And that's actually the only die I'm using in this. So I'll take that back. I am using this one. And I'm using this double leaf one. And we're going to actually use these on the inside of the card. I'm using another bundle that comes from the annual catalog. This one is the Charming Sentiments bundle. Here's the stamp set. And I love that we have dies that die cut the words. I think that is so cool. So the only one I'm going to be using is the Wishing You the Happiest of Birthdays. And that is this die right here. So that's the die I need for that. I'm using three die sets with this. This one I'm also using the stitched rectangles dies. We've had these for quite a while. And I'm using the second largest one in this small grouping right here. And that's it with the die set. And then I'm also using a uh, embossing folder from the annual catalog. This is the Painted Posies 3D embossing folder. Okay, we're going to get some stamping done first. So I'm going to grab a little piece of basic white. This is a three and a half by one and one quarter inch piece. I'm going to grab my Mary Merlot ink pad, and then I'm going to stamp it, or ink up the Wishing You the Happiest of Birthdays. And we'll get this near the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect because it is going to be die cut. Hold that down for a little bit, and there we've got that. And now we're going to grab, we'll go ahead and leave this out. Well, we'll close it, though. We're going to do some uh, water coloring with all three of these stamps. You need your Mary Merlot, Crushed Curry, and Soft Succulent. I'm going to grab a piece of basic white again. This is a six by two and three quarter. We're going to grab this pretty flower. And we are going to stamp this uh, 
three times. So once again, I'm doing that twisting to make sure I've got it inked up really well. And we'll stamp this here. Do it again, so we'll do it two more times. Okay, we have them all stamped. And that is all the stamping we're gonna do, but now we're gonna do some coloring. So I'm going ahead and get that stamp and pierce mat out of the way. Now I'm going to do something I haven't done for a while. I've got my clear wink of Stella. Love this. I forget to use it sometimes. And I'm gonna grab a piece of paper towel. I'm going to start with my Mary Merlot. So I'm going to squeeze, while well, it's closed, squeeze this together. That way this lid is going into the ink pad. And then that gives me a little ink well with my Mary Merlot. And I'm going to squeeze this, make sure I've got a little bit of that glitter. You want to shake it up because that gets the glitter all in there really well. And then, oh, I'm picking up, so I think it's doing just fine. So I can pick up a little bit of ink. Now what I'm doing, I want it to be darker near the center and then get lighter. So I'm going to get the inside first, scribble that a little bit, then gradually go up, keep going up. It's going to keep getting lighter. So that way I've got dark at the bottom and lighter near the top. And you're probably not going to be able to see it, but it is shimmering in the light. I love the Wink of Stella, the look with this. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more. I'm going to squeeze a little bit more to make sure I've got some stuff coming out. There we go. Get that dark right there in the center. Then start gradually going up because it'll start lightening up as I go. There we go. So I'm just going to keep doing all of the these flowers with the Mary Merlot and these three bigger ones in these groupings will be with the Mary Merlot. Okay, I thought I'd slow it back down again and show you how I'm doing these. So I'm going to do in the same way. I'm going to start at the bottom and do it darker. And once I get that all dark, then I'll gradually go up and it'll start lightening up as I go up. And that is, looks good to me. And I really wish you could see the glitter. It is so pretty in the light. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these last three. And I decided to go back to this one a little bit because it was a little too light there for me. So now I've got all the Mary Merlot. I think I decided I'm going to go ahead and color one of these and then I'll do these off camera because that'll make the video go way too long if you have to sit there and watch me do all of them. So now I'm going to grab my crushed curry. We're going to do the same thing, squeeze it together so we get some ink up here in the lid. And then I'm just going to be doing, I'm going to shake this up every once in a while. That gets it working a lot better. So we'll get that yellow and then I'm going to make these little top things yellow too. I didn't want to make them just Mary Merlot and I decided that I'm going to make these since they're smaller I'm not going to have them show the Mary Merlot yet they're still going to be more green like flowers usually are but I still kind of like to have that yellow on top so put those right there we'll wipe that off you always want to wipe off your color and then we'll go with our soft succulent squeeze that together and I'm going to do the same concept with this I didn't have to bother with yellow because there's just little bit spaces but I'm going to start here at the bottom since these leaves are kind of small I'm going to do the bottoms of the three of them and then scooch up so the bottoms are just a little bit darker than the top okay so that's how I'm going to do all the leaves Okay, now these little round ones, I'm going to do like I did with the, Bur the Mary Merlot ones. Start dark at the bottom, just like the leaves too, and then go a little lighter at the top. Okay, so that is it. And if you're making this along with me, you'll see how shiny it is, but it is so pretty in person. Okay, so I'll go ahead and finish these off camera, and I'll be right back. You go ahead and pause the video if you're doing this with me and get yours finished coloring. Okay, now we've got them all colored in. So let's go ahead and get our die cutting machine out. Okay, we've got die cutting platform, die plate number one, standard cutting plate number three. Let's go ahead and grab this one here. And we'll go ahead and grab our happiest of birthdays. I'm going to take this one here and it goes right around the greeting. Get that all centered. It just fits just like it's supposed to. 
So if something's a little too far away with the opening, then you know you need to keep moving it. With it being a little longer, it takes a little bit longer to get it all there. That looks good. So I'm going to put one here. Put one here. Then we will grab this. Just put that right around. There is a little hole here, so you can see if the stem's there. So I do see some black there. And I think one's going to be good enough. That's a pretty big piece. And now I'm going to grab a standard cutting plate. We will run this through. And we'll have our greeting done here. Slowly take this off. And isn't that neat? I love having that die cut like that. So take that tape off so I can use that here in a second. We need to get our flower here. And it even takes a little bitty piece out of here and right here. So there is that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this ready to die cut the third one. And I'm going to bring in another piece. I do believe, yes, I can. So we will get this all evened up like we did before. And I always make sure I put that tape right inside the inside of the die because that holds it even better. And I'm grabbing a scrap piece of Mary Merlot and a scrap piece of soft succulent. And we'll go ahead and put the leaves, the leaf die there. And the flower just fits. Put a standard cutting plate on top. And we'll run this through. And we get this really neat flower here. And then this die here did two leaves. So we've got a set of leaves for our inside flower. Got that one. The other one looks real similar. Right there. Now, you've seen me uh, die cut a few of these. So I'll just hurry up and do this last one real quick. Okay, now we've got the last flower. We've got a couple more things we need to die cut here. I'm going to grab a piece of crumb cake. This is a five and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I'm going to grab that stitch rectangle die. And I'm going to kind of angle it a little bit because I kind of want a corner to go in first. That helps the uh, machine and helps the die not to, uh, get warped. And we'll run this through. And we're going to need three of these. So after you see, oops, it's flying everywhere. And now we've got our stitched one. So I'll go ahead and finish the die cutting the other two. Okay, now we have our three rectangles done. Now we're going to do some uh, embossing. So get rid of all the plates except keep the uh, base platform. I'm grabbing a piece of Mary Merlot that's five and a quarter by four. And my card is going this direction. It's a landscape card. So I wanted it to be mainly flowers. I didn't want any empty space like it is up here. It's, they're going to be covered up a lot. It just is giving me the texture I wanted. It needed a little something, not just a plain piece of cardstock. And then we're going to put that specialty plate on top again, since it's a 3D folder. And there is that piece all ready to go. So we are all done with the die cutting machine. Let's go ahead and finish this card. Okay, let's go ahead and grab that Mary Merlot piece that we just embossed. And I want to grab a piece of that Rustic Harvest DSP again. This is a five and a quarter by one and a half. This is a crushed curry color, so it matched perfectly with our color palette. Grab my standard cutting. I mean, sorry, my seal. I don't know what's getting to say plate. I'm done with my die cutting. And we're going to put this right across the middle. I think it's a little easier to do it this way. So get those um, edges lined up, and that'll keep it straight. Looks like I didn't get right in the middle, so I'm going to bring it over a little bit. You do need to be careful. Seal, you can lift it up again for the first 10 minutes or so, but be careful when you are using um, the uh, oh embossing folder when it's been embossed. Oops, it looks like I didn't cut this down right. Let's grab my cutter. We can fix that. 
I have a feeling I forgot to make it a five and a quarter. I sure did. So we'll just hurry up and cut. Oh, that's, there we go. Get the right blade. There, now it looks right. <laughs> Glad I had my cutter close by. Okay, so now we've got this on. I always put this on before I put uh, the whole thing on the paper, on my card, I mean, because sometimes when you emboss, this time it did the opposite since I didn't cut it down, but sometimes it shrinks this a little bit so the DSP might hang over. So then you can turn it over and clip that off. It's a lot easier to do before you put it on the card base. So I'm going to grab my card base, and this is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of crumb cake. Get those corners lined up. Get my trusty bone folder. And then we will go ahead and put this across the center of the card base. Like so. Make sure you get some there in the middle. Make sure the fold is on top. Put this right here. Looks pretty good. And now we are going to grab those uh, rectangles. And I think it's easier to start on the outer ones and then do the middle one, okay? So let's go ahead and put some adhesive on this. I'm going to go across those narrow sections and probably just put a couple little here. Now, the edge here on the side is going to be a little bit smaller than the top and bottom, but not by much. So it's almost centered there. That looks pretty good. So yeah, the, make sure the top and the bottom are equal. I mean, when I'm equal, I mean the Mary Merlot part that's showing. But it's just about this much on each side. So I'll turn this over. Oop, I got a little piece of white paper on there. We'll get this with our adhesive. And I'm going to turn it this way. I'm looking on here to see if I've got it about the same width here. It looks pretty good. Getting it centered top and bottom again. That looks pretty good. Let me maybe bring it down just a little bit. It moved more than I thought it would. There we go. Then push that down. And now we can put that middle one in and just center it between the two on the edge, on the sides. So once again, I think it's a little easier to do it this way. I'm lining the top and bottom of the rectangle with the top and bottom of these two and centering them like that, okay? Looks like I could bring this up just a little bit more before I push it down all the way. They're much better. So now we'll go ahead and put those down. Now we're going to grab our pretty flowers. Oh, it is so pretty with that glimmer. I wish I could get the lighting just right because it is so pretty. Hopefully I can get it in the pictures on my blog post. So I will go ahead and turn these over. And I decided to use dimensionals on these. Now on the big flower... We'll just put a dimensional, full-size dimensional on there. Now I'm going to take my paper snips while they are still on the backing. It's a lot easier to cut while the piece is still on the uh, backing. And I'm going to need two each of these. I don't know if I counted enough. I'll probably have to cut some more. I'm going to put one up here. These half ones just work a lot better on these skinny sections. So that one's ready to go. And yeah, I think I need to cut two more. I had a feeling. But the reason I do it while it's still on the backing, that way this keeps it so the adhesive doesn't get on my scissors. It doesn't stick to my scissors. It's just a lot easier. So put another one there and grab this half one. And yes, I do use my the borders of my dimensionals. You want to use all of them. So now I'm take my take your pick tool again. We will scoop these up. And then I'm going to center it left and right on here, but I'm going to have it up higher than the middle, okay? So I kind of tell the branches about in the middle. So that looks pretty good. And just having it maybe oh that's not quite a half an inch, I don't think from the top of that, probably more like a quarter of an inch, a little uh, less than a quarter of an inch. So we've got that there. We'll get the backings off of this one. And it doesn't matter, you don't have to go all the way to the side down, I can just put the middle one on there, because I'm going by my rectangle now. And kind of eyeballing this, making sure they're about the same height. And that stem is in the middle. 
or close to the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Now we'll get those off of here. Do the same thing with this one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, now let's get our greeting. And I'm going to put dimensionals on it too. And I think I used half ones on this one too. I was a little nervous. Let's see. That big one's probably, well, no, I think we're going to be okay. And this one's definitely wider. So we'll go ahead and put another one right there. So yeah, you can use the full-sized ones on the greeting. Take these off. And I'm going to put this right down here along the bottom edge, but kind of center it on the card. Let's bring it down just a little bit. I'm looking, should be about two letters of the happiest and two letters of the, birth, of the birthday's word. Keeps wanting to get cockeyed on me. There we go. Oh, I know why I didn't get the backing off of this one. That would help. There we go. So now we have got the front of the card done. But we need to do the inside. So let's grab a piece. This is a five and a quarter by a four inch piece of basic white. I'm going to grab my silicone mat again. And we'll get those little flowers. Let's first put this one down. And I'm just going to put glue on that middle section. I'm not going to worry about all those little narrow sections. Just put a little bit here on the center. If I can get it to come out. There we go. I'm going to put this in the bottom left corner. Kind of angle it like so. There, it's attaching really good. Now I'm going to bring in my leaves. Turn them over. And I'm going to put a little glue just on the top and the bottom ends of this leaf. Now, I got a little too much glue. Now it's coming out too fast. So I'm going to kind of take some of it off and put it on my silicone mat. That'll make it so it doesn't glob up when I put it on my uh, project. So I've still got some glue on there. And then I will stick this under here. Not too far because I don't want to see any of that leaf through the openings of the flower. Okay. And now that glue there is going to dry, and I can uh, peel it off in a few minutes. Come, I've done that many times with this, and as you can tell, this is pretty clean. So it comes off really easy. And we'll do the same thing with this one, making sure we don't have any of the leaf coming through the bottom, or through the middle, I mean, of the flower. Hold that down for a few seconds. Had a little glue on my fingers. There we go. And that's what we're going to do on the inside. So I just felt like putting a little flower with the die cuts in there instead of stamping like I usually do. Get our uh, adhesive on here. Bring our card base back in. And put this in the center. And then we will be done with the second card. Let me get this stuff out of the way. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I brought back in my two cards. This first one here on the left was with that Apple Harvest Bundle. And this one was with the Fresh Cut Flowers Bundle, both part of that Perfect Partners promotion that's going on right now. And if you want to see the other bundles that are part of it, because there are four others, just click down in the Perfect Partners promotion link I've got down in the video description to see what's available. And these are, the dies are available uh, while supplies last or till September 30th, whichever comes first. Now, if you live in the United States and do not have a demonstrator of your own, I would love to be yours. And I would love to send out your first set of catalogs for free. This is the annual catalog, and this is a July to December mini catalog. Just click on that contact me link below and give me your mailing address, and I'll get these mailed out to you right away. So once again, thank you for watching my video. And if you'd like to stamp with me again, make sure you subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe button below. And then when that little bell icon pops up, click on it and select all that way YouTube will notify you every time I upload a video. Well, I hope to see you in the next video. And if you like this video, I would love for you to comment or like. I love interacting with you. And uh, it's, just, it's just fun to get to uh, see the people that are watching the video. So I hope you come back again. See you in the next video, guys. Bye. Thank you.